According to the report, the number of child laborers increased in Africa while it has declined in other parts of the world. About 40 million are girls and 52 million boys. The continent has also seen an increase in both the number and percentage of children in child labor since 2016. The vast majority of child laborers in sub-Saharan Africa work in agriculture while the largest share of child labor take place within families. The COVID-19 crisis threatened to further erode global progress against child labor unless agent mitigation measures are taken. To help us reflect on these bleak statistics on such a day, we are now joined by Angela Nabuowe from the Initiative for Social and Economic Rights in Uganda in Kampala. Angela, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Thank you for having me. It is indeed a pleasure having you this evening, Angela. Now, the number of children forced to work has increased to 160 million worldwide. So what does this alarming figure mean on such a day when we're supposed to be commemorating a day dedicated to eliminating child labor? So the numbers going up uh, globally has a big impact, uh, especially when it comes to uh, countries in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, which is Uganda inclusive. We know that uh, uh, the numbers have gone up uh, highly, but in Uganda currently, the figures we are talking about uh, 2 million children out of uh, engaged in some form of child labor, uh, children aged five to 17 years. And this constitutes 14% uh, uh, percent of the all children uh, nationally. But we also know that these children being out of school, engaged, these children being engaged in child labor means that they are also out of school, which, is go which has longer term impact on their well-being, but also on the social economic transformation of, uh, of countries. So uh, 160 million is the global figure, but when you, have, you come to sub-Saharan Africa, we are seeing an increase of 16.6 uh, .6 million due to uh, COVID-19 mainly, but this is largely attributed to extreme poverty and inadequate social protection measures uh, that have led to the increase. So uh, we are saying that sub-Saharan sub Africa is going to have uh, uh, major challenges going ahead. And uh, maybe just to bring you up to speed with what is happening in Uganda is that Uganda announced uh, a lockdown. The president announced a lockdown on Sunday, 6th of June, and uh, ordered school closures countrywide, effective 7th, that is Monday. So this is going to further impact the number of children that are involved in child labor, because since the first lockdown, we have had children who have not yet gone back to school at all. So with the second lockdown, which became effective on 7th, we are going to see more children engaging in child labor. And when they are engaged in child labor, chances of going back to school are really minimal, unless government does something about it. Now, today, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced a £430 million pledge to improve education in some of the world's poorest countries uh, with girls' education a priority. And uh, chief among the beneficiaries of the UK aid are the schools from Malawi and Uganda specifically. How have you received the news and what kind of impact will this have towards your efforts in Uganda? Um... Of course, it is always a pleasure. It's good that we receive this kind of funding, which I, we are in need of. But just to relay some of the fears that we have, since the outbreak of this pandemic, Uganda has been borrowing money and receiving all kinds of assistance from different countries. And what we see is that uh, there is not really that transparency that you need. There is no participation from the populace, but also there are questions around whether this money will go to those in most of in need. I'll give you an example. Uh, Uganda received COVID-19 emergency education response uh, to do uh, to to help with education response recovery. Uh, received 14.7 million dollars from the World Bank to support uh, students' learning to support uh, children when they are going back to school, to support initiatives around monitoring and evaluation. But we see that most of these e efforts are 
not coming through. There are, around, there are a lot of questions around how this money is being used. So money comes in, but we are yet to see the impact of this money. Our debt is also growing, but we are yet to see the impact of this money. I'll tell you that right now, 28% of children aged five to 11 years, which is uh, 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 engaged in child labor, they're out of school. Eh? And many children in Uganda, when you look at our statistics, one in four children who enroll for primary education do not complete, they don't make it to secondary education. Mm -hmm. And when you go even further into that, most of our adolescents, 24%, uh, on, uh, the, uh, that is the only figure that is enrolled at secondary level. And this has a number of, uh, it, it has many questions around it because you see that enrollments are really problematic because of the less funding. The money is available, but there's less funding that is going into uh, uh, primary and secondary education. And also the school environment plays a role in keeping children out of the education sector, like the school infrastructure. There's lack of toilets, especially when it comes to girls, they cannot keep in school. There are no washrooms. So when this money comes in, it is a blessing, but we are seeing a problem, especially with this money that is coming in now for COVID response, that this money is not going towards the intended beneficiaries. It is not ending there. There are questions about transparency. There are questions around accountability and questions around participation of the populacy. So we are not sure this money is going to make a difference. Ever since we started receiving COVID assistance, this money, we don't know where it is going. There are many issues we are dealing with as a country. And this is very key. We are celebrating elimination of child labor in Uganda, but we see more children being pushed in child labor. They're out of school because the funding that is supposed to go to these schools is not there. We have you know, Angela, I know that so many families may have a totally different view to child labor. I mean, the, the, the big question perhaps could be what constitutes child labor? Because when a family says that when they ask their children to tend the fields or to look after the cattle, that is not child labor. It's actually training them to be better people, to be better men and women in, in the future. So uh, Uganda's Employment Act sets the minimum age for work at 14, at 14 years. Children between 12 to 14 years are permitted to perform some light work under adult supervision. But this should not intervene with their education. The challenge we are seeing in Uganda is that children are working in dangerous conditions. Children as young as nine years, eight years are in gold mines. Children as young as eight, they're involved in stone, in stone quarries. They are doing dangerous work. They are getting injured. It is having a big impact on the of it. So the way this is happening in Uganda is that these children, it's not the parents that want the children to work, but parents are stuck. And this has not just started with COVID-19. We had children who are going into child labor before COVID-19. It is because they had dropped out of school because of school fees. They couldn't afford the fees that schools are charging. So children, parents are stuck. They have no way out. They have no food to eat. That is why they are sending their children to work. But we have seen, we did research with Human Rights Watch and Friends of the Nation Ghana, and we found that children are working in dangerous conditions because they're hungry at home. There is no support from government at all. So it is, it is, this is forced labor. Some are experiencing sexual abuse. I don't think any parent would want their child to experience sexual abuse at this age, at, at any point in their lifetime. Children are injured. They don't have any help. So it is because they are stuck in a system where social protection is inadequate. But then that is, is your organization at liberty to spell out and set out a list of what constitutes child labor? Because granted, you've made an example of children working in query mines, uh, which is uh, absolutely diabolical. We can't expect an 11 year old to, you know, to be working uh, in, in coal mines, for instance. So uh, what is it that constitutes child labor? Can household chores uh, be deemed as child labor, for instance? No, no. House, household chores is not child labor. The child labor we are talking about here in Uganda especially is children going to work in agricultural plantations, okay. children working in 
plantations all day, children working on the lake, children working in mines. That is child labor. Those children are not supposed to be exposed to that. Okay. Now, Uganda has seen a sharp rise of COVID-19 cases. Uh, how is the recent spike and the lockdown restrictions and the school closures further impacting on the Ugandan child? So um, what is happening right now with the second wave, uh, which is really terrible, is that many children have been forced out of school, uh, effective Monday 7th. And uh, we are registering really high numbers, which is worrying, especially when you look at our health system. So we see that uh, more children are going to be out of school, but they are not able to learn because the platforms that we have to be able to assist these children are online. Many people do not have access to these online platforms. And the assistance what we have received is uh, not reaching those people, uh, everyone, especially when we talk about children in rural areas and children of the poor and also children with special needs. You see that the learning materials that have been distributed by government are also grossly inadequate because the Ministry of Education announced that they were only able to cover 25 percent of the population. But from the monitoring that we have done as an organization, talking to different parents in different districts, we see that children in rural areas are not learning at all. They have not received these materials. So it is going to take them backwards many years because it is only the children of the rich and some of them uh, may be those who have some kind of access in urban areas and those in private schools that are able to get some kind of assistance but majority are being left out so with this second lockdown and having children out of school it is going to take us many steps backwards and yet we had achieved some progress okay so just briefly and in hindsight how best can such practices of child labor be mitigated uh, first of all, government needs to uh, get government and development partners need to involve to invest in programs that can get children out of child labor immediately, especially the ones that are working in uh, precarious labor conditions. But also we need to have inclusive social protection programs because when families have something to uh, to eat, they can meet their basic needs they are not going to send their children into child labor. But because they don't have, that is why they are sending them. But also, we need to eliminate school fees, much as the Ugandan government has committed to providing free universal primary and secondary education. There are no guarantees. It is not universal and there are fees. So we want government to guarantee universal primary and secondary education that is of good quality and get all children back in school, including children who are out of school before the pandemic. But also we want labor laws because we have many labor laws. We want those labor laws to be enforced and also have companies engage in human rights due diligence throughout their global supply chains to ensure that they are not contributing to child labor. Okay. And I think that we can have some way forward. All right. Uh, Angela, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your reflections. Thank you, Tom.